Hey guys, this is Joyce Klassen, and I'm back showing you how to use EasyBib. EasyBib is a citation tool that's available to you uh, and Metro Nashville Public students. When you will need to use EasyBib is anytime you have find research articles, books that you need to cite in your research. And EasyBib website looks as easy as this, but I want to make sure you know how to log on correctly using the coupon code that's new this year. Last year it used to be where you were just at school and it would automatically recognize you as a Metro Nashville student. This year you need to be able to put in the code for when, say, you're researching an article and you found the article you need, you want to go ahead and hit that citation tool and send it to the EasyBib account and you want to make sure that you can know how to log in correctly. First thing you'll need to do is sign up on EasyBib. So go ahead and go to the sign up and you'll want to create your account. You have options to create your account here or just using your own Google account. You can do your own login. Once you are logged in, you want to go ahead and put in your coupon code that's available to you on the personal projects page. Uh, the coupon code link is right there underneath your email. And with adding in the coupon code, you get rid of a lot of the unwanted ads and you have more features available to you. The coupon code is H-I-L-L-S-H-S-644. Go ahead and accept that code. And there you go, you're set. Now you will see that you can build in different projects. And this is not just your personal projects. This is other projects throughout the school. And all you need to do is edit out your name, add in what fits, editing your project, adding a title, your subject. You don't have to do all these things, but it's helpful to add that project title. And then you can also choose which style your teacher recommends. Most of your teachers will recommend MLA. And it's not until you get into upper levels into college where you'll move into a different style of formatting. So now it's time to add in those resources. So we go back into our where I picked something that I needed. I again hit EasyBib and it'll send that citation straight into my EasyBib account. And there you go. You have the correct citation all ready for you. Perfect as can be in MLA 7. And this is where you can go in and edit and add things into your citation, like an annotation. We won't need to really change anything in the citation because everything was given because you pulled it straight from a database. But here we go. We can add the annotation. And this is basically where we annotate this article helped me learn. You're just basically giving a synopsis of the article. Hit your update your citation and then it'll save it in there. This is also a great place to save quotes that you might have pulled from the article that you think would be would be a, an important part of your article. And that's where you could copy and paste, copy something out, put it in quotation marks, of course, so you can pull it out into your research paper later. It's a great way to save all your resources so you're not at the end of the project trying to find all those resources you use. As long as you're saving as you go, it'll make it so much easier in the end and you'll truly be able to show all the work that you saved. Almost all of the resources we have at Burrow Library have a direct citation tool with EasyBib, so it's really a good idea to get comfortable with it. Don't forget Biography and Context is a great database. Remember Hillsborough is the username for Biography and Context. The bi Biography and Context da database works automatically at school, but if you were off-site, you would need to put in the password Hillsborough uh, to work in Biography and Context. What I like about Biography and Context and all the In Context databases, you can start to type something and it auto-populates so you can easily find uh, what you're looking for. And I'm going here because what's great is I can find some more information on what my personal project could possibly be about. But you got your fact box, you've got your the biographies, you have more con featured content, 
What's also great, you have images that are available to you to download and save, and you have the correct citation, because even a picture is important to cite in your work. What do you cite? Anything you didn't create. Did I take this picture? No. So I need to give credit where credit is due and cite where I got the picture from. Again, that's why it's great to use these research databases that have all these citation tools put in so you can easily cite your pictures and show where you have got your information from. And there you go. I've got my citation showing the picture that I want to use in my project, and there's nothing else I need to do. I've got my citation. Let's look at another database that has that citation feature, Classroom Video on Demand. The password for Classroom Video on Demand is Hillsboro for the username and Hillsboro for the password. Here again is that feature that I really enjoy where it auto-populates and give you some genre searches. And I can already tell that this is probably an article that can help me out in my research. Anything you pull off a classroom video on demand is something you can use in, this, in a research project because it is actually verified information. This um, video here would actually be an example of a primary source because it's an actual uh, recording of John Lewis. So I could count this as a primary source if that was one of my requirements in my research. So it's great being able to go through and see this live primary source. Another great feature is the transcript. You can go into the transcript and it's actually word for word, for word what is being spoken in the video. What's also neat is you can skip to the section that you think would be the most important part of your research. And if you hear something, you're like, oh, that's great, I need to quote that. You can find it in the, the transcript and highlight and copy and save that as part of so you, you make sure you get the correct wording whenever you're citing that video. Again, it has that citation feature where you can easily send it to your EasyBib account. And there you go, you got your citation in there. You can add in your annotation. There, I added in my citation, create that citation, and everything is ready for me, and I'm starting to build my work as I go. Great researchers find lots of sources, and it helps them find the truth to what they're researching. I always use the example of a principal trying to figure out how did a fight happen. He doesn't just go and ask one person. The principal would go and ask multiple sources, and he would also go to sources that he trusts. So that's why we want to make sure we, we gather great uh, resources from great uh, databases. And I'm here to help you find those uh, databases that are perfect for you. Student resources, opposing viewpoints from your TEL link that's linked on your burrowlibrary.com is a great place to do some of your research. Again, there you go. It's pulling more information up for me so I can narrow down to exactly what I'm looking for. And again, you're not just getting one source. You're getting multiple sources. So here, are just very specific to what I was looking for, I have over 20 resources that are available to me where I can learn more about my topic and videos and audio clips. Don't hesitate to look at these NPR uh, recordings. They're very informative and they're some, you know, enjoyable to some to listen to. So you'll continue to build your citation page and you can also go in and add books. You don't have to necessarily use that um, citation tool. Sometimes you'll have a book uh, that you need to add in. And it has a great search engine for it. And there we go, I found the book that I'm working on, so I can cite this book. 
You can also manual site, and that's where you enter in the information all by yourself. You might have to do that even interviewing a relative in any of your project. You would put that as as a citation. Of course, it might be a primary source, but you still need to cite your information. So once you've found your sources, you're getting towards the end, it's time to turn that bibliography in. You just go ahead and click into your um, project. And you can see you have lots of options on how you can share it, emailing or sharing a link or exporting it to Google Docs, Word Docs, Dropbox, OneDrive. You got it all. And so you have options. I want to show you what it'll, it'll look like. It'll be that piece of paper you turn in at the end of your report. You want to go ahead and click the next button, download for Microsoft Word. So we open the file, and there you go. You've got the Works Cited page that is uh, a required piece of your personal project. Don't forget, if you want it uh, just downloaded into your Google Docs, you do have that option as well. And I'll show you that real quick. Well, it looks like it is already successfully downloaded to my Google Docs. I can go to my Google Docs and I should be able to see it there. And there you go. It's all there. I hope this is helpful. Don't forget, uh, this research resource will be available to you. I have the, the link to the video. It'll be on the personal projects page where I'll keep all those little information sessions that we have. Don't hesitate to come by the library and ask for help. I love to help. It's my favorite thing to do is to help you find the resources that you need so you can be your best here at Hillsboro. Have a great day and good luck researching.